What's going on guys, welcome back to the channel. So today, I gotta go ahead and knock out the high steer arms on my Super Duty axles that I'm putting underneath the uh, Jeep YJ. Um, so the high steer arms that I chose to go with are from a company called Beyond Precise. Uh, there's a couple reasons I chose to go with them. One is th they're, they're priced really well, especially in comparison to some of the other options that are out there. I was really happy with the price. Uh, the other reason I chose to go with them is is I was able to get in touch with them and talk to them about all the uh, measurements for like the drag link and the tie rod. And after talking to them, I was able to figure out that these are drilled perfectly for swapping this axle underneath the Jeep. Uh, and what I'm talking about is when when you're when you're doing a swap like this, you need to make sure that your steering arm that's coming off your gearbox matches the distance that your drag link is mounted from the ball joint. So for instance, the stock Super Duty axle had about a seven and a half inch mounting gap. So your drag link was coming out here off of your tie rod, which is mounted about seven and a half inches from the center of the ball joint. Well, with the Jeep, the Jeep uses a four and a half inch arm. So if I were to hook everything up like that, I would lose steering. I, my wheels would not go lock to lock. So the way to fix that is to move the drag link in back to the four and a half inch sweep that you have coming off the gearbox or make a longer arm. Uh, now, I already wanted to go high steer arms and everything else. So it was much easier instead of trying to fab up a, you know, a steering arm. It's much easier just to get an appropriate high steer, uh, you know, high steer arms that have the drag wing drilled where I need it. Um, and that's exactly what these are. So now the first thing I got to do to get these on is I'm going to have to drill out the knuckle. Now, a lot of people talk about stepping up drill bit sizes and stuff like that. And that, that works great and all. Um, but for me, one of the things I found to work really well is just to throw the three and a quarter, in, uh, the three quarters of an inch drill bit in put it on high speed on a cordless drill, put some cutting oil or some WD-40 in the knuckle and just, just run it home. Um, cordless drills usually don't have enough torque as long as you're in high setting to, to really like snap on your wrist. Um, and they're strong enough though that they'll cut if you go slow. And I know, uh, I yes, I burned through drill bits. Uh, but I'd much rather burn through a $25 drill bit than break my wrist. And... Also, it's something I get done super quick usually. Uh, it usually works out really well. I'm not fighting it for half an hour. It usually takes me five minutes to drill these knuckles. Um, so that, that's just the way that I like to do it, and it works out really well for me. The other thing that I got to do is I got to grind down some of the stuff on the knuckle. Now, right here, this is where a fitting goes for your uh, vacuum lines that for the vacuum hubs. Now, I'm not going to be using that and on top of that. It's in the way. So I'm going to be grinding that down and getting that out of the way of the top plate for the high steer on um, because it needs to sit back against this little ledge. So I've got to grind that down. The other part that I got to get rid of is going to be this boss right here. This is from the casting. So I got to grind that down smooth. So I got to get all this cleaned up. Um, that way I can get everything fitted and, and tightened onto the knuckle. Now, I like to do everything right here on the axle. The reason I do that is because it's just a little bit easier just to leave everything hooked up, get all the grinding and drilling done right here, uh, than to try to take it all apart, put it in a vise. I just find that this works out really well for me. Um, so this is the way I like to do it. So I'm gonna, once everything's cleaned up, we'll, we'll get everything fitted and, and start welding. All right, so now that I got the knuckle all drilled out and I've got it shaped and ground down, uh, we just gotta drop the high steer arm into place. And the biggest thing you're looking for is to make sure that it sits back against that key slot. There's a little notch right here. You want that to sit back against the knuckle. Now, the other thing you want to make sure is that the top sits flat. Now, as you can see, I'm not hitting anything. It's not sitting crooked. And that's one of the other reasons that I kind of bolted this together first is it kind of helps to make sure because you'll know you'll be sitting high if you haven't ground enough here or it won't be sitting flat something will like you'll feel the bolt dragging um so everything's sitting really nicely now i want to point out i used one of the one of the dom sleeves in the position that i might be running the drag link 
And, and that's for spacing. I want to make sure that nothing gets twisted, funny, or anything like that. And I say might be running my drag link here because I don't know. I haven't designed the steering yet. I haven't gotten all that worked out. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to be running my, my drag link in this position or um, Beyond Precise sends you a bracket that you could weld onto the top if you want to move, let's say, your drag link up top even higher or if you wanted to run, like, let's say, your, your tie rod up even higher. Uh, they, they give you kind of a few options here, which I thought was kind of cool. But that gets me into the the sleeve for the factory position for the tie rod. I'm not going to weld this sleeve in. A lot of people do, and I recommend doing that. I think that, that it's a really good idea. It kind of adds a little bit of strength. Uh, you know, I'm not doing it because I don't know if I'm going to need to run my, my tie rod in the factory location because I, I've still got to figure out clearances for everything. I'm going to be running the the PSE Big Bore um, uh, steering box. And I'm not 100% sure that if I'm running my tie rod in this position, if I'm going to have all the up travel I need. Um, I, I'm not trying to have this Jeep super high, but I'm still trying to fight for that five inches of up travel. So um, I've got to figure that out later. So that's one of the reasons I'm not going to weld this one in. This one I will weld in. Later on, when I figure out where the tie rod's going to go, or I'm sorry, excuse me, the drag link's going to go, if I find that I'm not running it in this position, if it's up on top, I'll weld this spacer in as well. It, it's just for added strength. I, I like kind of beefing these up as much as I can because they take a lot of stress, especially with side impacts. You know, you have all, all that leverage way out here up top. It, it, the more that you can kind of burn in and add strength, the better. Um, so now that that's all done and I know it fits, I got to go ahead and get this knuckle off. I've got to press out these ball joints because with this being a cast material, I'm going to be preheating this up to around 400 degrees uh, to weld. checking on it every couple hours just to see if it's still holding heat and uh i just checked it and it's actually uh you know it's it's not even warm to the touch anymore so it's good to unwrap so now i'm gonna go ahead and get this cleaned up and put back together and get it back on the jeep Well, there it is, guys. So high steer arms all welded on. It came out great. I'm really happy with how it looks. Uh, as you can see, I've already kind of started throwing some of the pieces together to start kind of mocking up for the steering and, and figuring out all that. But that's going to be the next video. I'm going to cut it off here, and I'm going to actually get the other knuckle thrown back together. I got it wrapped in a blanket, still cooling down. Um, so I got to get that back together, get the tie rod built and all that stuff. But like I said, that'll be the next video where I go through all the steering geometry and how to how to build a track bar and get everything right to where everything kind of works in harmony. 
Uh, so definitely keep an eye out for that video. Until then, hopefully you'll like, subscribe, comments, questions down below. Uh, appreciate you guys.